Hey, it's me. Today I am doing another episode of Create This Book 2. It's been over a year since I did the last episode of Create This Book 2. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have been spending time with Create This Book, doing those Create This Book challenge videos, which have been so much fun, and I do plan on continuing them. It's been so long since I've done this series, there might be some of you who don't even know what this is. Create This Book is actually a book that I wrote and published myself. It's a prompt book, so each page has a different art or creativity prompt on it, and you just fill out the book with your art. It's just like a fun, casual kind of art activity. This is Create This Book 2, because it's actually a sequel. First Create This Book, just called Create This Book, was the first. Create This Book. Both of the books are available on Amazon if you want to get your own and follow along. I do have a little bit of a surprise in this video, but I'm gonna leave that till later, so just... Just a little teaser. Stay. <laughs> please, please stay. I'm ready to jump into this, so let's get into the pages for today. All right, it's been a year. I need to get reacquainted with the book. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. All right, a little stroke, a little squeeze, some pats. Great, we're best friends now. Let me find the page that I want to start with. Uh -huh. Here it is. Create activity. Dedicate this page to your favorite sport or activity by filling it with drawings, writing, and or photos. Okay, simple enough. I'm going to grab a piece of regular print paper, roughly block off how much space I have to work with, and start sketching my art for this page. I was kind of looking at this as somewhat of a warm-up to get back into it, you know? I went for a prompt that seemed really easy, and I went with a kind of simplistic idea for my art just to get in the groove, you know? Get my groove on. I said that because I'm 105. So I drew a cat, which I am very familiar with. I I've drawn a couple cats before. This cat is going to be doing my favorite favorite activity, which may shock you, painting. Who's shocked by that? Now I'm gonna go for the outline on this. Not sure why, but I'm kind of obsessed with the idea of a cat painting with its tail and getting paint all over it. I think I watched the Aristocats one too many times when I was a kid. I know I've drawn something like this before. Once the line art is ready, I'm laying down some paper towels and breaking out my super fancy watercolors. Windsor and Newton. Oh. Using fancy watercolors is not gonna change the fact that I'm painting a cartoon of a derpy cat, but I like to pretend like I'm sophisticated. I also got this set of pastel watercolors. I saw these and could not resist. Look at those pastels. I'm trying to mix a color for the cat herself, starting with this very odd gray. I added blue to it and then some water. Hmm. Oh, why are you mixing watercolor on top of the clean artwork? Are you nuts? No. Well, then you're stupid. This turned into an even stranger gray. So I tried adding a tiny bit of orange and then it got really green. That's so much worse. I have mixed a lot of paint, but the water is throwing me off and I'm just doing things things that don't even make sense. I started over and I just added a little bit of black this time. Okay, it's brown. I don't think I understand how to mix watercolor paint, but you know what? I don't hate this. I started painting while my camera was still zoomed in. That's great. We can't see anything, dummy. There we go. I'm painting a light layer of watercolor over the whole cat. I did add some little shadows here and there, but nothing too intense or detailed. Then it's time to paint the paint. Love to paint the paint. If there's anything more fun than painting, it's painting paint. I get to test out my pastel watercolors. The orange was a little too washed out for me, so I added some darker orange in there, but here we go again. It's the mysterious clear goo. What's this about? These fancy watercolors, they're just a complete mystery to me. I need to go back to Crayola. I have no business using these. I'm adding the entire rainbow of colors, and they are beautiful. Oh, they are just yummy. And then I'm gonna fill in all the paint splatters, mostly at random, just using whatever color feels right. I did notice that this paint is very pink pigmented, which is great, except that it's covering some of my ink outlines, so I'll have to go over those again in the end. Bad news for someone who doesn't like to do the same work twice. Other than that, they're great. From here, I threw on a very light gray background, and then let the whole thing dry, and boom, we're ready for phase two. I brought in my colored pencils to do the shading, which I love doing because I feel so much more comfortable using colored pencils than watercolor. I feel like I have a lot more control and a better grip on them. Literally, that's a death grip, and I need to loosen up or I'm gonna get a cramp. This really helped give the paint that nice voluptuous look. Finally, I used my Posca pen to add some juicy highlights and make the paint look nice and wet. Last step, I took some matte Mod Podge and carefully added a thin layer over the pages 
to keep the color from smudging within the book. If you do this, make sure you let the Mod Podge dry completely. I'm talking days before closing the book. If you wanna play it safe, you can just wait until it's dry to the touch and then stick in a piece of wax paper in between the pages and just keep it there for a while, just in case. After a few days, I brought them back, glued the paper into the book, trimmed it all up, and voila, here is the page. This one was really fun and simple. It's colorful, there's a cat, there's juicy highlights, you know. Life is good. I feel like doing the Create This Book Challenge videos has helped me a lot to feel like I don't need to put so much pressure on every single page for these books. Like, this is supposed to be fun. Let me flip forward to the next page that I'm gonna do. Here we are. It says, create whatever. Use this page to create anything you want. You got it. You may notice that this page is a mess. There's a lot of bleeding from this girl. She's bleeding out. And from this page, which this was actually intentional bleed. That was the point of the prompt. I am gonna keep the bleed on the other side, but this side I'm gonna cover up actually because I wanna fill this with anything I want and I don't want blood. What I want right now is to make some digital art. Oh, the evil glare is here. Let me flip my light. I set up a Procreate document to be the same dimensions of the page and I'm jumping right into my sketch. I wanted to design an alien bean body. <laughs> yeah, it's not like I haven't done a few of these already, but the way I see it, this page, it's all about having an excuse to make absolutely anything you want. I want to invent an all new bean body. I'm seeing one that's very babyish and cute and she's eating a star cone. Oh, we learn about yet another Nophologian food. A star cone is like a regular ice cream cone, but the ice cream has been injected with stardust. Sounds dangerous, but it's actually great for a growing bean body's immune system. Okay, trust me. I decided on a nice medium purple for her body, a light purple for her tail. Then I added some little pink accents to her and oh, she's already so cute. I thought that these colors would look nice against the yellow of the star cone. And look at that, I'm already onto the blending. I wanted to bring in some blue to give her a nice kind of alien type glow thing. I feel like she deserves a name. Okay, she is such a sweet baby, but she's also an alien. It's gotta be something kind of weird. I love the star cream. Full disclosure, I'm probably gonna bring it back at some point. I even gave it sprinkles and I made each of the sprinkles glow. It looks so appetizing. I would love to eat a thing that glows. If you've never tasted star cream before, it tastes kind of like vanilla and marshmallow with a hint of lemon. Mm. Now that I'm looking at this bean body, she kind of reminds me of Dotsie with the tail and the dots and the fascination with stars. You know what? Yes, I think this is Dotsie's baby cousin. Lotsy. Lotsy. I did it. Because you know how all cousins have rhyming names with each other. That's definitely a thing. Here is the final artwork. She's cute. I did have to print this out and the colors got a little bit washed out in the process. I need a new printer because the one I have kind of sucks, but this will work for now. I'm just gonna plop it right into the book, cutting a window out for the instructions, gluing it down, trimming it out, and yay, it's in here. I like that I tried something different by incorporating some digital art into my book, and this was really fun. I just thoroughly enjoyed making Little Lotsy and her star cream. Hi, I'm back to bother you. I mentioned a surprise at the beginning of the video. Surprise! Create this book three. You guys have been asking me to release Create This Book Three forever. And just because I'm taking my sweet time getting through Create This Book Two still, a lot of you have already finished Create This Book 2. It's available for you, sweeties. I will leave the link in the description. Usually, I'm the type of person who's like, okay, finish step one, then step two. Finish step two, then step three. But in this case, I'm just so excited about Create This Book 3 and some of the prompts that I know are in here. I'm willing to embark on some chaos. <laughs> start Create This Book 3 today. I am gonna continue working on Create This Book 2. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is just kind of work on them both at the same time. You know, maybe I'll do two pages of Create This Book 2 and one page of Create This Book 3 or two pages of Create This Book 3 and one page of Create This Book 2. And that's what I'm gonna do with the rest of the video is I'm gonna pick a page to do and Create This Book 3. So let me do that now. Okay, so here's my fresh new baby. Ooh, so much blank potential. Woo! 
Woo! Let's flip through all this intro stuff. Okay, where to start? Create bewilderment. Draw something completely ridiculous and pointless on this page. <gasps> yes, I love it. Not today though, what else do we have? Create a contest. Create a contest you know you would win. Oh, I do love winning. What else? Create a terrible smoothie. Invent a smoothie made from blending the grossest things you can think of. That sounds fun. But you know what? I think I'm gonna go with this page, which says create resistance. Draw something heavy on top of something light. And I have just the idea. I'm starting with my light thing, which is the lightest thing I could think of, cloud. And then on top of the cloud, I'm going to draw a very rotund dog. And she is a Shiba Inu, which is actually my favorite dog breed, even though I've only ever seen one in person like three times. The thing about this Shiba is that she has a love, a love so strong that it has kind of become her entire personality. And her love is of gummy candy, particularly gummy worms. She'll take the bears, sure, but the worms, that's where it's at. Oh, she's cute. Getting rid of my pencil lines and I'm ready to add the color here. I do feel like this is kind of an off the wall idea for a character. It kind of came out of nowhere. So I wanted like a nonsense name for her. And then I remembered Nina. What? It's gonna be Nina. Okay, I can explain. So currently I am nine months pregnant, literally ready to give birth at any moment and still have not decided on a name for the new baby. I keep asking Mini-Me, you know Mini-Me, how could you forget this hand? I keep asking her, what should we name your baby sister? Because yes, I'd like to hand that responsibility off to my toddler, thank you. She went through a phase where she would say Nina, which is of course an actual real name, but we don't know anyone named Nina. She just completely made it up and it was a joke to her. She thought it was absolutely hilarious to keep suggesting Nina. We were confused about who Nina is, but now I think I found her. This is Nina, the chunky Shiba Inu eating gummy worms in the clouds. I wanted to do something special for her design, so I added some yellow, red, and orange accents to her. She loves gummy worms so much and she eats so many of them that she's actually starting to look like one. She's absorbing so much of the dye that it's starting to grow through her fur. It's a very healthy situation. Side note, I did want to let you guys know that in Spark, you can actually share your Create This Book three pages. I'm going to be uploading all of my completed pages as I make them so you'll see them in my personal gallery. And when you upload your pages, you'll unlock some extra special content. Ooh. If you're interested in being able to add Create This Book and Create This Book two pages as well, please let me know. Now that this page is finished, I'm adding my layer of Mod Podge and here she is. Oh, Nina, you're just my favorite. Keep eating those gummy worms, girl. I want to make her real so I can hug her and so she can share these gummy worms with me because they actually look really good right now. This has been a really fun episode of Create This Book. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.